Our first phases of Stormgate pre-alpha and alpha closed testing have ended, and as we gear up for the next round of testing starting in early October, we thought it would be fun to recap how testing has been going and to share some of our favorite moments. We started with testing our first faction, the Human Vanguard, in one versus one competitive only. Our co-op versus AI mode is coming later this year. These are not marketing betas, but actual playtests of some of our earliest work. Our primary goal in this early phase was to generally stress test the reliability of the game's architecture. We were looking for bugs, crashes, and testing out matchmaking. And to our surprise, the game has been performing really well, definitely exceeding our expectations at this stage. Even though testing has been much less about balance, right away our players began theorycrafting. Sergeant Fluffles tested the most efficient command post placement and charted Bob worker count efficiencies. Another chart details who wins this fight. What do you think? Two scouts or one lancer? How about a hedgehog versus an exo? A Vulcan versus five Exos? Watching this incredible energy and enthusiasm among players was really exciting for us. On top of this, a ton of strategies began emerging. The very first build order shared way back in pre-alpha was, as we should have known for a spiritual successor to StarCraft, the Sentry Gun Rush. Fear Dragon posted this build within hours of the start of testing. That didn't take long. This strategy utilizes Vanguard's unique faction ability to build structures with multiple workers. And yes, the community mapped out the efficiency of this too. Here's how it worked. To start, Aetherium Refinery was built right away and four bobs were immediately pulled to the enemy base. These workers could quickly build turrets within range of mining and enemy buildings. If not scouted before they arrive at your base, this was very difficult to stop. But what was amazing to see is that even in a limited test, we saw counters emerge to defend this overpowered rush. If scouted, the defender could immediately make a Therium refinery and turret of their own, quicker as it was right in their base, and use another unique vanguard ability to gain defender's advantage. Bobs could use their overcharge ability to increase their damage and armor in order to win this game of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. While it didn't take long for this piece of cheese to emerge, it also didn't take our team long to make some big balance changes that we'd roll out in our next phase. There were many great openers being developed. We were just frankly blown away with what these skilled players were able to do with our early build of the game. Basically all of the prevalent build orders revolved around capturing creep camps right at the start of the game. When a player successfully defeats one of these camps, a variety of things are rewarded. Some players decided to play it safe and fight uncontested resource camps on their side of the map for an economic head start. Others, however, rushed to defeat a speed camp, which allowed their scouts to catch up to the enemy and prevent their escape. Each player must calculate the risk of taking unit damage and getting surrounded by the enemy versus the reward of gaining valuable power-ups. Creeping was designed to incentivize players to be active on the map, creating key areas of contention and so far, this tug-of-war battle for map control seems to be working well. The game's engineering performed so well that players were able to host a couple of impromptu pre-alpha and closed alpha tournaments. The pre-alpha tournament was team-based, and Cats, Scarlet, and Awesome Sauce held a watch party for the private Discord group. Super inefficient here, gonna lose a bunch of units in the process. Turrets are insane as far as damage output is concerned. Um, obviously with a big disadvantage that they cannot move. And not to mention all the lost mining time. Once you have so many Skyriders, your exos literally do nothing. In the end, Team B won the tournament with Scarlet clutching the final victory and becoming our pre-alpha champion. We are super grateful just to all of the time and attention that the testers and players have put into it so far. Uh, and I think very humbled as a team uh, to see what you've already done with something that is such an early state of gameplay. In the next phase, Closed Alpha 1, 
players hosted their own End of Alpha tournament on Rally Cry, and we assisted their efforts. Players signed up to an open bracket, and it came down to a round of eight. Beomulf and Attico even hosted their own shoutcast of the matches. Here are some highlights. See here, he's on three bases. He doesn't really have that production. Now the Skyrider bubble gets popped. So Lucifron just has to get on top. He has got to get in right now. Otherwise, he will lose that third. But the Skyrider bubble has minimized, I think, enough of the damage here, even as Lucifron gets on top of it. So yeah, eventually Lucifron dives on top, but the bubble shields the rest. And it is just so much damage that Lucifron is taking right now. In the end, it came down to finals between Parting and Kiwian. Well, we're gonna have the Vulcans dash forward there, and I just we just don't have the upgrade from Ki from Kiwi, and so now Party gets on top here. He sets his blood, but he's in the range of the Vulcans, and there are more of them. Watch the Exos fall. That was not the play there, Parting. Kiwi decided to go up the ramp. He's gonna get the turret kill first, and now the Skyriders can just bubble his own units. And it seems like the Exos from Kiwan are making short work of his opponents. All of those bobs might be overcharged, but they take damage all the same. And the base is very low health right now. With the turret going down, that base going down in the natural, it didn't even get a lot of mining. I could see parting GG in out of here because that evac didn't have enough damage to sustain him into a victory. And it is gonna be Kiwan winning 2-0 on the finals of the end of Alpha tournament here today. With all that, we think that testing so far has been incredibly successful and so much fun. We're getting tons of valuable feedback that's leading to a lot of improvements. We're going to continue welcoming more players to each new testing phase. And here's a bit of fun trivia. We've been internally codenaming each testing build based on past real-time strategy units. Apocalypse was what we called our first closed pre-alpha playtest. Then came Banelink, the closed alpha test we just held in August 2023. Luckily, the game didn't blow up. And now for our next testing phase, Chronosphere. This is another closed alpha test, and the good news is we have tripled the amount of players invited to test the game. And after much anticipation, we're adding our next playable faction, the Infernals. This early feedback really helps us as a team figure out what's working and focus our attention on areas in most need of improvement. We can't wait to get this game into everyone's hands. If you'd like to be considered for this and future testing, sign up for beta on playstormgate.com. And if you haven't already, wishlist Stormgate on Steam. See you in battle.